Hello dear scratchers. I know you love to make shooting games and yet we don't have any challenge related to shooting. Well, it's because we try to make challenges that have some constructive outcome. Today we are going to be shooting. Guess what? Some smoke rings. And we will encourage you to cover some signs behind them in your do-it-yourself projects. This way, you and your friends can learn about an interesting concept. So for your do-it-yourself project, you can easily create a homemade style air vortex. You can watch the experiment in the YouTube links given in the description and make one at home. All you need is a paper cup, some tape and a balloon. To operate the cannon, you have to hold the cup in one hand and with the other hand, you have to pull back the tight part of the balloon or the extra part. And once you try pulling it, you see how it affects the air blast. And because we won't be able to really see its effect, what we do, we add some, you know, to take a little bit of incense or something and put a little bit of smoke inside it and then see how far the blast of air goes and then items so that you can knock them over with a blast of air. So the challenge today is based on this experiment. Can you create a tutorial for your friends? and a fun game to simulate the behavior of the air vortex cannon in your scratch project. Let us quickly dive in to see. So now for the shuttle, we have created a cannon and from this cannon, we have placed the cannon, if you observe closely, the center is right here so that it is easy to put the smoke rings at the edge. Now because we want this to be moving around to aim at the object and this is true for any kind of you know, shooting triggers we are setting the rotation style to all around and basically we are pointing towards mouse pointer now this single piece of code itself would be enough to do what you want so you can see that is enough actually the reason trying this code is because we want to avoid it going all around that is why i use the if condition to check for the direction and only if it is here we are moving along the mouse pointer otherwise we are just keeping it in a particular direction so that is what our canon sprite is doing now the bulk of the work is of course for the smoke rings to be coming out is the kind of cloning code you are very familiar with we are sh using two variables we are keeping count of how many of these objects popped and how long the smoke stays inside the container uh, before it runs out on green flag click we are repeating this until smoke is equal to zero so we are not using a forever loop here because we want the game to finish once we have reached our timer countdown from 100 to 0. And we detect if key space is pressed. We are switching first costume for it to look like more of a cloud of smoke. And I would really encourage you to play with the costumes and make it look closer to the demonstration videos or the kind of smoke you are able to generate at home. And then we are creating clone, changing the smoke by minus one and just giving it a 0 0.1 second wait. Once the clone starts, we are using a ghost effect. So this is something which you may or may not have used. It's part of the look block. It's part of this same block where it starts with color. It has multiple things. So, so you can try that. Then we are starting to have the smoke go at the mouth of the cannon. And that is where the placement of cannon was important in the costume. And then look at this code. What we are doing is we are repeating until touching edge. Now the reason is we want the smoke rings to reach the edge in whichever direction you choose the mouse pointer, but it should reach the edge. So what will happen till it reaches the edge? It will basically keep moving by 10 steps wherever it is. So it will keep moving forward till it hits the edge. And it was also stay pointed in the direction of, now this is another new sensing block we are using so we are sensing where is the direction of cannon now where do you find that block right here under sensing under reset timer do you see this you you may miss out on this so how it works is first you select what object you're working at so right now it's a selected to stage that's why it's showing the backdrop number once you select cannon you will be able to see different set of items here applicable to the sprite so you choose 
direction here. So we are basically going to be pointing in direction of cannon, moving 10 steps until it touches the edge. And once it crosses a certain point here, we are switching costume to costume queue. So you can make this much more intricate by playing with a lot more costumes and that's going to make your project come become more interesting and become more alive and then eventually deleting the clone now what are your objects doing and again you can use whichever object you would like to play this should be simple enough uh, you're just creating clones of them and you are showing them in this area so using pick random for x and y positions based on the coordinates and if it is touching smoke r we are changing pop by one switching the costume and eventually deleting the clown wear and it's a very similar code for the candle but we are just having a little more fun with candle that first we change the costume to costume 2 and then eventually we hide it so we are using the if condition on costume number the reason we give you a little different tips with pieces of code is so that you get ideas but eventually we want you to try out don't just write in all the code from the challenge tutorial. Build it piece by piece so that you know what, what do you want to do, what is working. And based on that, you can really keep learning. I really look forward to seeing different kind of vertex cannons. If some of you can create tutorials so that your friends and scratchers can even attempt making one at home. Have fun. Ta-da.